so that's where he's got the mask. <laughs> Fifteen a.m. off to Tel Aviv now. Back to back meetings in two different sides of the city. Actually, today, then heading to I-24 News to talk WWDC. It's going to be a good day. Good news and bad news. Good news. I found parking in Tel Aviv. The bad news is it's half blue and white, half red and yellow, which means I really hope I don't get a ticket. No ticket. Back of my car, yes ticket. I did once ask a traffic cop, but he said as long as you're half on blue and white, you're good. Here we go. So I just want to talk a little bit about this camera that I'm using, the Panasonic GH5. I got it because I was starting to vlog and if I'm being honest, Casey Nice that was talking about the camera, he said it's not perfect and I am experiencing every single one of the problems that he described. But he did say that this is what he's using and this is the best out there for vlogging, so I decided I'm going to start using it. B&H sent it, amazing camera, amazing, as you can see. I hope you see me well, I hope you hear me well, it's awesome. But I have to say, I've been having this kind of recurring thought about the irony in advanced cameras like this. This right here is the iPhone 7 Plus. When it comes to focusing, when it comes to taking selfies or, or any kind of picture really, or even video in terms of focus specifically, and I'm not gonna say it's more advanced, obviously it's not more advanced, but it's, it's kind of ironic to me that I have to jump through like hoops to get this thing to focus properly. I know that Panasonic's working on it. I know that if you YouTube the issue, you'll see I mean, hundreds of videos about the autofocus issues on the, on the GH5. It's just something very ironic about the fact that in, when it comes to photography, the, the more advanced cameras have and figured out what our cell phones or our mobile phones have. Deep Thoughts by Hillel Fold. No ticket. Booyah! Now on the other side of Tel Aviv at WeWork Hazerem, which is the newest WeWork in Tel Aviv meeting Matt Krieger, one of the top PR dudes in Israel, and then Kobe Menachemi, a legendary entrepreneur who I am fortunate enough to be called a friend, and I'm actually, I guess, laughably advising, although I learned from him way more than I can ever help him with, but whatever. He asked me to advise, so I couldn't say no to that offer, right? Then, after that, I-24 News, talking about WWDC. All right, I love this WeWork, it's awesome. Great vibe here. Man himself. <laughs> just, I was just talking about you, man. Oh, yeah? What a coincidence. This is the WeWork team. Who are you? Hi, I'm Oni. And this is WeWork Hazaram. Check this place out, everyone. Wow. Look. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Here. <laughs> Love the vibe. Fantastic. I have two meetings now lined up back to back here. How can I get some food around here? Um, there are going to be, there is sandwiches here. I don't do carbs. Really? On, no, but real it's food. a really good they're really baguette. Good sandwiches. French, French sandwiches. baguette. I'm sitting here at WeWork Hazerem, one of the newest WeWorks in, in Tel Aviv, and this dude walks over, and I have like 20 minutes to my first meeting, having some good seltzer, Lachaim, and he says, he wants to tell me about his project. So I said, well, don't worry, the camera's off. And I said, wait a second, why should the camera be off? And I turn the camera on, and now you guys gonna tell us about what he's up to. My name is Igal Ram, I'm, I work at Reut Institute. What's Reut Institute? So Reut is a nonprofit, uh, already 13 years old, uh, dealing with key problems and issues in the Israeli society. It's a think tank and a do tank. We deal with uh, societal issues, with national security issues, okay. with issues of disabilities, education, and combating delegitimization of Israel and anti-Semitism. Now you got my attention. I'll tell you why I'm saying that, because I deal with this garbage online every day, all day, every day. Like, I, I have people that attack me. I've had people create fake Facebook accounts just to like attack me and troll me and accuse me. I actually have a friend at Facebook who, who handles abuse at Facebook, and she's pretty awesome she removes these accounts right away she helps a lot but the reality is that there's there's a problem there's definitely a problem so, so what do you do tell me 
And the problem is not only online, it's, all, it's also offline and many communities and many Jewish organizations are facing it uh, yeah. on a daily basis. What I wanted to tell you about yeah. is the project I'm leading at Root Institute. It's called Firewall Israel. It's a concept of building a political firewall around Israel as a concept, Israel as a state, and around pro-Israel communities around the world to combat bias, combat delegitimization of Israel, and combat anti-Semitism at large. So, I mean, here's here's the big question, right? So, I get it online all the time. I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm anti-Israel, right? I mean, can you really separate those things? I mean, politically, of course, you could be anti-Israel's policies. That's that's okay, and that's legitimate. But from that to, like, burning Israeli flags and, you know, doing things that I think, personally, maybe, maybe I shouldn't go there, but I feel like that's already borderline anti-Semitic. So, what is your opinion on the differentiation between those two things? Is it a clear differentiation? There's a very clear differentiation. One can be critical of Israel. It's legitimate to be critical of Israel. What we see in, in, in the real world, though, is that this criticism is often biased, it's often unproportional. <coughs> UN. <coughs> <laughs> 90% of severe criticism against Israel would, would probably fall under category of anti-Semitism. Guess where I'm going next week? UK. No. Paris. <laughs> going there for a tech event, but I'm, I'm, I was literally told by endless people, take off your kippah, take this off. Like, what does the world come to that I can't walk around the streets with a kippah? It's crazy. Pretty sad stuff. When we set up Firewall Israel, the idea was to try and get technology and technological capabilities which are available out there and kind of harness them for the benefit of Jewish communities and pro-Israel organizations around the world which would not have access to such resources or would cost them a lot of money, whereas we in the Israeli tech community are able to get them done for the benefit of everyone quite quickly and easily. Now that I understand a little deeper, you know, email, things get lost. Now that I understand what you're doing, how can I help? There's essentially two things uh, you can do to help. First of all, any organization or community that advocates for Israel and uh, would like to have the capabilities of the Firewall platform should definitely contact us. What's your website? So it's firewall-israel.org. Mm -hmm. All right, so check out the website. And if you are an advocate for Israel, which you should be, by the way, whoever you are that's watching this, Israel's a phenomenal country. As I'm hoping you see from the vlogs, then check out Firewall Israel. Contact this guy, info them, email them at info at. And, uh, okay, that's one thing. You see, there are two things that I can do to help. What's the second thing? We are a nonprofit organization. We work in a very lean structure, but we still have ongoing costs. We are looking for donors. We're looking for contributors. We're looking for volunteers. So if you want to volunteer with us, you want to help us code additional features, if you want to contribute money, we're always in the need and we would really we highly appreciate it. All right, fantastic. Hopefully something will come of this. Good luck and Thank let me know if there's much. anything else that comes up that I can help with and I'm happy to help. Cool. Thank you. All right. So my meeting with Matt starts in eight minutes. Matt Krieger is an old friend and like I said, one of the top PR dogs in Israel. He does PR for Apple. Microsoft. I mean, among hundreds of companies that he's worked with over the years, really top startups, top tech companies. Overall, he knows his stuff. And we're just we're just catching up, um, seeing if there's anything I can do to help him, anything he can do to help me. He's an old friend. That's gonna be cool. And after that, like I said, Kobe Menachemi, who uh, sold his last company, Cross Rider, and is now working on a new thing that I'm fortunate enough to be an advisor at, Kapai. will be launching soon for that, I-24. So yeah, a lot of good stuff coming. Hopefully, I'll bring you along with me. So here I am eating lunch at WeWork, and I bump into this guy, who I was introduced to, what, two years ago, a year and a half ago maybe, by, by one of my favorite investors in the Israeli tech ecosystem, Arya Mergi, one of the founders of M Systems, and the guy who invented the thumb drive, basically. And you know he's sort of a legend, so he told me that this kid is something special. So when Arya says that, I listen. Since then, his company, what's the name of your company? RapidAPI. RapidAPI.com. Com. Raised money from? Andreessen Horowitz. Just like the top investor in the world. And they just acquired their first company. When was it, last week? Uh, about two weeks ago, yeah. Two weeks ago. So you guys are a young company, 20, 30 people in the company, and you're acquiring companies, you're raising money from Andreessen. What is Rapid API in like elevator pitch? I, I mean, I can yeah. do it if you don't want, but you can tell me what it is. I actually want to see you do it. All right, challenge accepted. Probably better than me. I would say the elevator pitch is kind of back end as a service. So it's, it's more than that. All right, see, so, I, f I failed. Yeah, no, it, it's a good start, but we see the backend is a lot of API connections. So you use APIs to connect to Facebook and like 
my your user's login. I use if this then that, by the way. If this then that, but if this then that relies on APIs. Right. So we build the infrastructure letting them connect to APIs. Okay. So imagine if they need to connect to, also an Andreessen company, by the way. Oh, really? Um, I didn't know I'm, that. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Love uh, it. They need to connect to an emailing service and okay. to Facebook and to Instagram right. and to Snapchat right. and to all of those services. Right. We give them the connection layer to, to make those connections. Love it. I mean, you guys are onto something obviously. How old are you again, remind me? 19 now. 19. You're 19 and you're the CEO, yes? Yes. Founded a company, funded by injuries and Horowitz, you're acquiring company. Something tells me you have a pretty uh, promising career ahead of you. So keep kicking butt. And like I said, if there's anything I can do to help ever, let me know. And I could say, I think I'm, I'm the guy who like, w one of your first press appearances ever. Like we, yeah. we did like, I think we did like, a, what did we do, like a Snapchat or Facebook it's, Live? No, I think it was a before Facebook Live event, but like oh. a Snapchat story. A Snapchat story. And I, and I was like, okay, like yeah. I, I've met smart people in my life, but this is a whole different level. Anyway, my meeting's here, so I'm gonna get off this thing, but thank you and keep keep rocking, man. It's thank awesome. You. And come back to Israel. I get it that you gotta be there now, you know, to build a company in San Francisco, but we gotta get you back here soon. There's nothing better than being in Israel, especially during this time. You heard it here first, folks. Love it. So this here is Matt Krieger, who I told you a little bit about before. But I know this guy. I mean, I know you probably, I don't know, probably 10 years by now, maybe a little bit less. You know, there's a lot of people that call themselves PR professionals, and I'm being very diplomatic here, but you know, what they do is basically send an email to their friend at some publication and be like, cover this company. That's not PR. PR is framing the story, PR is doing correct outreach, follow up, processes, real PR. Matt, right here, who do you work with? Give me some of your clients. Oh, we work with a range of really great Israeli startups. Give me some names. Of different indus industries. We work with uh, companies from from the uh, IT space, a great company called Continuity Software. We work with companies in the uh, healthcare space, a diabetes treatment company called Glucomy. Dov Moran is one of the founders. Of that Dov company. Moran, by the way, I just mentioned Ari Mergi before, but Dov Moran is Ari Mergi's partner. He's the guy that invented the thumb drive. He is one of the godfathers of Israeli tech. He's sort of a legend around here, and not only around here. Anytime you use a thumb drive, Dov Moran invented it. Okay, go on. We work with a great few uh, cybersecurity companies. One of them is the former head of uh, 8200, Nadav Tafir, his company. 8200 is the uh, Israeli Defense Forces tech unit. So I'd say 90% of the entrepreneurs that I meet start the conversation with, I came out of 8200. It's where they learn your, their bread and butter, the tech world all stems from 8200. Okay, go on. Then we work with some multinationals that are based in either in the US or in Europe, helping them inside of Israel. Okay, so give me some examples of that, uh, Apple. Yes, that is one of the companies that we do work with. We work with a really cool company called Flex. They used to be called Flextronics. They help a whole range of uh, companies in the manufacturing, smart manufacturing, IoT, home products, healthcare products. Really, really fascinating company. Okay. We work with uh, where we're sitting right now, WeWork. Oh, um, you, so we work, WeWork's your client? Yes. How does, you know, I gotta tell you, at that event when Adam spoke in Israel, Adam's the CEO of WeWork, I was like mesmerized by his career. The guy is so charismatic. He like took the whole room there, everyone was like, He's amazing. He's amazing. He's an amazing company. What are they worth? Nineteen billion dollars now? About that, yeah. Okay. So who else? We work with Microsoft as well, helping them on a number of. So, so let me just get this straight here. You're working with WeWork. You're working with Microsoft. You're working with Apple. Where do you go from here? There's, a, there's always other great companies to work with, but I really love also working with startups here, helping them with their growth because I think we we can really partner with them and help them as they develop their strategy and as they develop their business. All right. So how do people contact you? Well, you know this guy, so. They contact me, but what's your what's your website? <laughs> Gkpr.com. G like girl kpr.com and your name my name is matt Greek. can i you want to give your email or you don't want to give that there just gkpr.com go to gkpr contact them through the website they can contact you it's through the matthew website. at gkpr uh, matthew with two h's two that, t's i mean that's right oh, you see that remember your email by heart <laughs> impressive stuff all right dude keep keep rocking and keep doing good work and it's pretty pretty impressive what you've done so rock on man thanks i'll talk to you later all right dude heading to i-24 now the whole segment today is about Apple WWDC, talking about all the different announcements. That is gonna be interesting. There are a lot of cool announcements at Apple. Here we go.
features and buzz from the world of Apple is technology expert and strategic advisor Hillel Fools. Hey, Hillel. So uh, we're going to talk just about Apple today. This is exciting. Enough to talk about. Lots to talk about. <laughs> yeah, they had a what do they call it? The WWDC. WW whatever. It's yeah, the Worldwide they, Developer Conference. There you go. Yeah. They had it this week. It's um, dream one day to attend. One yeah. day it will happen. If you look at different things that Apple embraced over the years, they're never first, but once they do it, it goes mainstream, and that's yeah. true about all things that they do that they've done. And so. People have said that AR is going to come out in the new iPhone, and once Apple does it, that's it. You know, it's game over. It's going to be mainstream. Everyone's going to be doing AR. Yeah. And if you notice, they actually skipped over VR, right? They're not doing anything with headsets. It's just straight to AR. Okay. They didn't announce, you know, a cure for cancer, right? They're not. But at the end of the day, iOS 11 is not a little incremental change. They're making a fundamental change. They're, you know, changing the App Store design. The App Store is going to look completely different, which they haven't done since day one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you cool. open the App Store, now good luck finding apps there. The discovery is impossible. So they're redesigning that. Mm -hmm. iOS 11 has tons of new features, some of them really, really interesting. Whether whether it's, you know, uh, productivity issues and, and features or just entertainment things. And Tragic news on the vlog. Meredith told me yesterday that this is her second to last week at I-24 News. What are we, who's replacing you? Her name is Emily Francis. She's cool as you? She's cool, yeah. She's cool. It'll be She's great. not as cool as Meredith, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to have a good you're time. You're in good hands, you can put right. me on that. Well, well, we have a good time. You're going to come back to this, right? You're relocating, but you're going to come back soon. <laughs> and we're going to do a whole bunch of droning. And what else was that? Coffee. Coffee and droning. That's coffee the activity. Coffee and droning, that's right. I'm going right. to hold you to it. Awesome. All right. Look, you're out of focus. Let's get you in fire. You are now you're in focus. All right. Well, say goodbye to the vlog for now. Bye-bye, hey guys. One more week. One more week. And we're going to bring her back, though. She'll be back. She'll be back. I mean, seriously. Jaffa, Israel is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. You see all that sweat? That's from walking around. That's it. Just walking around. It is so hot today.